Welcome to Santa Bannon Fine Art Gallery, and welcome to the first night of Envision. It is actually Olympus Envision Photo Festival, so I want to get the sponsors. Now. Olympus Envision Photo Festival, welcome to the first night, the free night, um, and welcome to the gallery. I would like to first introduce um, Bruce Katzif, who will be introducing one of the two artists, Brian H. Peterson, Tom Chalet. I represent Bruce Katzif, and since he knows Brian so much better than I do, although I've gotten to know Brian and his work really well, and I love it immensely, and that's why you see it here, um, but since he knows him so much better, I would like for him to introduce Brian. Will you do that? I will indeed. I just put him on the spot, so this is not reversible. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Really, it's with great pleasure that I uh, have an opportunity to introduce Brian. I have had the great pleasure of working with Brian now for 20-some uh, years, 25 years. We first came together in the mid-1980s, uh, and we've had the opportunity to do some really terrific projects together. What's really wonderful and very special about Brian is that his uh, creative soul seems to move across a wide range of disciplines. Uh, this evening you all get a chance to see some of these really remarkable photographs that Brian has made, but in truth, that photographic work is really only one piece of a man whose energy seems to move, and it's not just energy, it's also the spiritual quality that Brian brings to the work that he does. Uh, his writing, his curatorial work, uh, his musical work, uh, Brian really is a renaissance uh, man, that's an overused term, but he really is. His creative activity seems to span a wide range of various disciplines. Uh, he's a very gentle soul. Uh, he has many, many uh, admirers, uh, many friends. Uh, those of us who uh, are fortunate enough to know him uh, really gain uh, a, a great deal of, uh, of love from our association with Brian. So I I'm delighted to introduce uh, Brian Peterson. A terrific fellow. I think that says it all. I'm <laughs> See you later. Thanks for coming. Wow, thanks, Bruce. I, I want to talk a little bit about this work, sort of the background of it. First, um, her first love was music, and studied that. In fact, I came to Philadelphia to, to study music, a composition, and, um, and then I, um, various things happened. I, I ended up going to grad school in photography and um, I learned in grad school many things, one of which was that I am a rocks and roots man. <laughs> that, that, was, that was the term that was applied, which meant I, I started out doing nature photography and did it very innocently, really without any particular awareness of what, what was going on in, in, in the world of photography. And then I went to grad school and discovered that I was a rocks and roots man, which was interesting to me to learn that. I just thought I was photographing stuff that I, that I liked. Um, but, but that's kind of where I started with this business and um, and over, over the years I I tried various things I, I'm kind of restless I guess you could say as a creative person um, I, I did kind of more formalist things um, uh, rhythmic things with objects in nature um, portraits I did for quite a while in fact I in fact I did Bruce and I collaborated on a portrait um, and um, but and I, I was always a darkroom guy and at a certain point, um, maybe about 10, 12 years ago, I started going to the dark room and I, I wasn't excited anymore. And it, it played itself out for me. And I knew the world of digital photography existed out there, but I hadn't really tried it when I really began to see the possibilities of it in terms of a kind of in, intense and unstructured creativity. I got very excited about it. And once I started down the dark path, I, uh, I forever will I rule my destiny. I mean, my, my dark room is now a storage area filled with stuff, you know, that we don't know where to put anywhere else. But uh, So in a lot of ways, my work has always reflected some kind of interest in music. My musical background always sort of permeates. With the camera, my, my attention had always been pointed outward um, at, at things in the world that I connected with and responded to and felt a need to make something out of. 
But at a certain point, I guess in my early 50s, I began to, to be conscious of aging, as often happens with folks, and, and I, be, I felt this need to sort of turn the camera back on myself. So I, I started to do that. So th this body of work um, began out of that urge, and a lot, a lot of what I was doing was, initially was, I, I would think about certain parts of my body. Every, every one of these pictures starts with a, a photograph of me, done by me, <laughs> And, but but what, what were my kind of feelings about the body, about that part of the body, the foot or the torso or the leg or whatever? And so I began to just, just um, almost fantasize or imagine uh, my, my own feelings about it. And, and these, these images started to emerge through the wonders of Photoshop, um, the things you can do with Photoshop, which are very liberating to, to a darkroom guy, I can say. And I, I began to make these images that in some ways are tough. They deal with with feelings about the body, about aging, that are that are um, attempting to be honest, you know, what it, what it feels like. And at any rate, I guess I could share with you, should share with you, to, to get, reach a full understanding of this work, that um, so, sort of I've been going on it for about a year or so. The work had begun to unfold, and then I learned uh, in, in the middle of that that, that, I, that I have a, 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 a I have parking um, And uh, it was very, very odd odd coincidence, I guess you could say, because here I was making this work that in some way dealt with the, the devolution of, of the physical, in some of it anyway. And um, I've often wondered since then if I, there was some kind of strange instinct. That, I mean, there, there were signs of, of the problem, let's say, before it was, before it was diagnosed. And um, I've, I've, I've often wondered about that. If somehow that was one, one thing that kind of drew me into making this body of work. But let's put it this way, when I found that out, uh, the feelings intensified dramatically, and I, I really just just poured myself into making this body of work. I did it for several years. Uh, part of the reason is because of the nature of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the disease. You really don't know in the beginning when it's diagnosed how it's going to how it's going to unfold. There there are many different scenarios, and uh, some of them are very drastic and, 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 and tough. I mean, there there are people who are disabled radically after just two or three years. Others go many years, they're, they're, it's, it's, it's a very complicated phenomenon. But it, but it was very, very um, emotionally uh, 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 shattering, I would say to me, really. Um, be, because I, I my, not to go into a lot of detail, but, uh, but I came from a very high family, the long-lived family, and I just assumed that my life was gonna unfold in the same way. And so um, I'm only sharing that with you to, just so you kind of fully I think it's necessary to understand um, why some of these images are the way they are, because they, they, they were a way for me to, to kind of get in touch with and, 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 and honor uh, all kinds of feelings that, 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 that were, um, grew out of this experience. Uh, so some of them are, are almost violent, really, I, I feel, in, in, their, in their emotional... I mean, the, the one up on the, over there, for example, uh, I, I was in a, I was in just kind of in a dark place, and I just started with, with with the tools of Photoshop, kind of burning holes in my body, uh, because it that's kind of it, it sort of felt like that. Let's put it that way. But other ones are, I think, um, for me anyway, sort of, sort of um, strangely transcendental. That it, it's one of the one of the odd gifts of, of, of when this kind of thing happens to a person that. That, that in addition to, to the sort of loss of, 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 of the, the normal, normal loss of, of actually of, of one's physical abilities, um, that there's, there's a sense of, of, of a kind of, a uh, kind of transcendence, let's put it that way, that, 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 that accompanies that, at least it did for me. So some of, the, some of the pictures, I think, begin to touch on that other, for me anyway, that, that, other, that other sort of side of things. Um, so, um, uh, I, uh, I did this this work. Um, this is really the first time I've shown this many of them. I've shown a, a smattering of them here and there. I'm very grateful to again to Santa because uh, it, this is not work that that is is easily uh, digestible. So I think some of it is difficult. Some of it is emotionally tough, and um, and, I, and and it's not the kind of thing that a lot a lot of gallery owners would 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 gravitate toward because because it's not it's not pretty landscapes. It's not you know. Whatever, and not that there's anything wrong with that. I've done a lot of them myself, but so I, I, th I thank Santa for for having the kind of um, I don't know courage or commitment to, 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 to the medium 
to do things that are not necessarily pleasant. So I, I appreciate that. So, I think they're beautiful, personally. Well, I really do. Mm -hmm. But yeah. difficult. So um, I, that, I guess that's sort of the the basic um, background of this of this work. Um, and um, uh, these happened. Um, well, I, uh, I, I I wrote them. They're about me, <laughs> for better or worse. No. Um, this is the first one I did. The sort of I've done a lot of books for the museum over the years, but but this one um, was very was, was special. I, I wrote it very very not long after I got to the, the, the knowledge of my physical situation, and um, some of the some of the book is um, essays about art uh, that I that I did over the years for the museum, uh, but 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 the structure of it basically is more personal. Um, uh, this this one I I, uh, I I began to think about. Um, this sounds very melodramatic, so forgive me, but um, what, what if this was the last thing that I had a chance to say? I mean, the, that, that was the mood I was in, actually. And, I, and, and these five words sort of came to me at the time, for some reason, uh, that I thought were that kind of summed up stuff that was important to me. And um, those words, if I can remember them, are uh, nourishment, Honesty, beauty, depth, and hunger, and so the, the book is divided into those sort of five sections. And there are five essays that kind of talk about those phenomena that, that are inter, that are then interspersed with, with other essays that I've written before, plus some old journal entries. And, um, and this one is is kind of a, a, a sequel, I guess, or something, um, but has more of my own work in it, and um, it's a little a little bit a little bit harder, a little bit tougher, let's say, a little, a little bit. De dealing with more difficult things, I guess you might say. Uh, oh, by the way, one more thing I want to I want to do. Um, um, there's a lady back there in the back who deserves a, a total medal um, for for um, for putting up with me. When you work for a museum, as Bruce will be the first to tell you, there, there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes that's not always pleasant, not always happy, and you, you tend to bring it home sometimes. And uh, so my poor wife has spent many an hour listening to me. You know, unload myself about one thing or another, and then thank you, Helen. She's, she's back there. <laughs> anyway, so uh, that, that's a little, a little background on me and then this body work. Uh, so. A born artist, Tom Chalet, began drawing at the age of two. Throughout his childhood, he made thousands and thousands of photorealistic drawings. Eventually, he earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Art Ed from Kutztown. He could throw a pot, design and make jewelry, weave, draw, and paint. After teaching art for several years at the high school level, Chalet enrolled in the Master of Fine Arts program at RIT. During his graduate work, he studied museum practices in the exhibition department at the George Eastman House. This experience introduced him to the platinum photographs of Alfred Stieglitz and the photo secession photographers. Once aware of the power and beauty of the platinum print, Chalet began a journey of mastering this exquisite photographic process, which he has continued to pursue for the past three decades. While interning at the Eastman House, he researched some long forgotten chemical formulas for platina types that were no longer taught in the curricula. At this time, he also began using a classic 8x10 view camera and printing exclusively in platinum for his fine art. After earning his MFA in photography, Chalet continued to pursue his scholarly research. He was granted access to the laboratories of the British company Johnson Matthey, purveyors and refiners of platinum metals, and collaborated with their scientists for a period of a, a year and a half. It was this company that was instrumental in the development of the original platina type process supplying William Willis the platinum metal compounds necessary to make his patented paper in 1873. Chile's extensive research led to the publication of his two books, The History of the Platinum Print and The Instruction Manual for the Platinum Printing Process. These books have been cited hundreds of times in reference texts on the history of photography as well as the photographic processes and were likely instrumental in the resurgence of the platinum printing process in the 1980s. He was actively involved in advertising photography and design 
during his career and served as president of both the advertising photography and served as president of both an advertising photography business and an advertising design studio, both in Philadelphia. Some of his clients included Mellon Bank, GlaxoSmithKline, Pfizer Pharmaceuticals, the Pennsylvania Ballet, Wawa, the Franklin Mint, and Vanguard Mutual Funds. He also worked as creative consultant with Applied Graphic Technologies in New York City. Chalet was a professor at the Applied Photography Program at RIT and has extensively conducted lectures and workshops on the platina-type process throughout the country. He has exhibited in over 40 exhibitions, including a 2010 retrospective highlighting Masters of the Process at the Philadelphia Museum of Art, an exhibition called The Platinum Process, photographs from 19th and 20th centuries. Artists whom have had the most influence on Chalet's art are Delacroix, Van Gogh, Caravaggio, Rembrandt, Stieglitz, and Steichen. The majority of his archive focuses on portraits, still lifes, and figure studies. He continues to make new photographs using his 100-year-old 8x10 view camera and print in platinum, the exception being the use of his iPhone and printing in the digital darkroom. Uh, I'm very, very honored to be exhibiting my work with Brian Peterson. I think our work is uh, synergistic. It definitely is about meta and morphous. Uh, me being meta and Brian being morphous. And uh, although we are, we approach our image making technically in similar ways in terms of combining images together to tell a story, because there's a narrative in Brian's work and there's a narrative in my work if you've looked at it. Um, the end results are very different. Okay? And I think that's one of the beauties of photography is that you can work with the same tools and the same process but come up with something that's very unique based upon what your idea is. Um, Brian's journey is a very personal internal journey based upon the things he talked to us about. My journey is also a very personal internal journey. Uh, not so much about physical, but more about spiritual, although I think Brian has that too because you can't separate the two as an artist and as a human being. Uh, but Mayan taps into more uh, traditional, iconic, and symbolic imagery. Uh, all the work in this exhibit, on this floor, was produced in the last two years. So it's all new work, which is exciting for me because it was a period of my life uh, for the last maybe 12 years, which I didn't pick up my camera. Santa so said I went to RIT in 1977. I studied uh, photography there for two years and then worked in Philadelphia. In New York for about 18 years and then came here in 1999 and only in the last two or three years have I started. Two events provoked that. The death of my father, which is kind of a certainly spiritual emotional thing, and two trips to Italy and being inspired by the art that I saw in Italy. And then that led me to start reading about the lives of the artists and reading about humanism and reading about Neoplatonism and reading about the Medici's and the whole, the whole mindset and how um, the Renaissance artists went back to Greece and Rome and merged the philosophies of those cultures with modern day time back, this was then of course in the fourth, the Quattrocento, Cinquecento, 1400, 1500, with Christianity and put the two together and that's what humanism and Neoplatonism was about. I saw that in the work in Rome and in Florence and in Venice and in Siena. Uh, and so I started reading about it and um, realized that I could, rec I could identify with that, I could recognize it, it made sense to me as a person, I'm Italian, maybe that's part of it. So then I started going back and finding some of my old photographs that I had made 30 years ago, and I had this image of Christ, you can see his face reappearing in a lot of these pictures, and that's why I call him the, the King of Sorrows, because he's kind of the King of Sorrows, you know, he's a man of a very sorrowful life and experienced many difficulties. Um, and I started using him as an iconic sign to represent the, the spiritual. So then I realized I was doing sacred and profane. You know, the, the, the sacred was the spiritual and the profane was the physical human. Um, and then I realized, well, there's a male-female aspect to this too because Christ's face is now on a female body. Um, and that led me back to my thesis show, which was about Anima Anonymous and Carl Jung and the belief that all of us have a male and female uh, part of our spirit and our soul that we share. They okay, were not always 
because we're male, we're not always men. We can feel and act like a female. We have that part of our, our physiology and our spirit, and vice versa. So I realized I was sort of uh, tapping into all of this work. And uh, then I used also, there's an image over here of, of the Madonna that I photographed in the church of the Santa Maria della Vittoria, which is where Bernini has his famous sculpture of the uh, St. Teresa in ecstasy in Rome. And I photographed that sculpture, and then I photographed the model in the studio, and I saw the two coming together. These ideas, um, when I make these pictures, it happens in about 10 minutes. You know, they look complex, because there's a lot of pieces to them. They're very complex puzzles. But I've thought about it, and read about it, and made notes about it, and dreamt about it, and fantasized about it for maybe six months, seven months, eight months. Then I'll sit down in front of my computer and just go out and find the pieces very quickly, and put them all together, and boom, it's done. So it's a, it's a spontaneous event that took 66 years to happen. Uh, and like Brian was saying, I used to be a darkroom guy. You know, all my stuff was 8x10, sheet film, processed the film by hand, made platinum prints in the 19th century photographic process. So I felt a little bit like I was you know, selling out when I moved to the dark side or the light side and went digital. Um, and it was hard, it was hard to do that, you know, because that wasn't my manifesto. My manifesto was being a pure photographer. Uh, but like Brian said, it's an amazing tool. And what I've tried to do is merge the black and white traditional, like the picture over here of, uh, it's called Ecce Homo, and the, the head of Christ, and he's holding a picture of himself, and there's a dove. That's actually uh, a scan of a painting of Christ by Titian, like that very white famous hair. Venetian. <laughs> <laughs> and then I photographed my model, and she was wearing a crown of thorns in the photo. And then I merged her, and that was shot with an 8x10 view camera. So I made an 8x10 contact print. Merged that with a scan from a book of the Titian painting, and then photographed the face of Christ, and put them together uh, and added the dove or the bird because of its symbolic meaning. Here, this mosaic is from the wall of uh, St. Mark's Cathedral in Venice. And I do, I'll, when I go to Europe, I just take pictures of things that I'm interested in. And sometimes I scan objects, the portrait of Christ in the back there, with the thorns and the roses, they're actual real thorns and roses, and I scan them on a flatbed scanner. Then I took the photo of Christ and I scanned the picture of the ukiyo-e, which is a courtesan from uh, Japanese art from the 19th century, 18th century. They were basically prostitutes. Uh, and put that woman's face together with Christ, with the thorns, with the flowers, and put them all together and made this, this composite image that uh, has all of these components to it. So I find it very exciting, like Brian was saying. It's, uh, it's a different way of working gives you a lot more flexibility to express your ideas. But um, it's hard for me to show this work too, you know, because if you look at my older work, it was very kind of traditional and safe. And this is all, maybe it's like what Brian said, it's a matter of age, you get to a point in your life where you want, you know, like he was saying in his book, like maybe this is the last thing I'm going to ever write or say, so I'm not worried about what people think. Look, you have everybody here who is an artist, or wants to be an artist, or thinks they're an artist, you should definitely read this book because I think it's an amazing statement about artists. Being honest. Mm -hmm. Being honest about yourself. Which is hard. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Brian.